we are here today because United Nations have defined goals for the progress of countries. They're called Millennium Development Goals. Look here, you have to end poverty, education, gender, child and maternal health, control infections, protect the environment and get the good global links between nations in every aspect from aid to trade. There's a second reason I like these development goals and that is because each and every one is measured. Take child mortality. The aim here is to reduce child mortality with two thirds from 1990 to 2015. That's a 4% reduction per year. But then I hear people saying, there is no progress in Africa. Eh? And there's not even statistics in Africa to know what is happening. I'll prove them wrong on both points. <laughs> and look here, when I take you into my bubble graphs, give you Congo, which was high, Ghana lower, and Kenya even lower. And what has happened over the years since then? Here we go. You can see with independence, literacy improved, you know, and vaccination started, smallpox was eradicated, hygiene was improved, and things got better. But then in the 80s, watch out here, Congo got into civil war, and they leveled off here. Uh, Ghana got very fast, this was the backlash in Kenya, and Ghana bypassed, but then Kenya and Ghana go down together, still a standstill in Congo. That's where we are today. You can see it doesn't make sense to make an average of this zero improvement and this very fast improvement. Time has come to stop thinking about sub-Saharan Africa as one place. The countries are so different and they merit to be recognized in the same way as we don't talk about Europe as one place. Let me show the wider picture. My country, Sweden, 1800, we were up there. And then you see these were famine years, these were bad years, and people got fed up with Sweden. My ancestors moved to the United States, you know, and eventually soon they started to get better and better here. And here we got better education and we got health service and, and, and child mortality came down. We never had a war. Sweden was in peace all this time. But look, the rate of lowering in Sweden was not fast. Sweden achieved a low child mortality because we started early. We had primary school actually starting in 1842. And then you get that wonderful effect when we got female literacy one generation later. You have to realize that the investments we do in progress are long-term investments. Let me now bring you to a wider picture, a wider picture of child mortality. The relation between child mortality and family side. This is once again 1960. 50 years ago. Each bubble is a country and uh, the size of the bubble is the population. And uh, these are the so-called developing countries. They had high or very high child mortality and family size six to eight. And, and, and the ones over there, they were the so-called Western countries. They had low child mortality and small families. What has happened? What I want you now is to see with your own eyes the relation between falling child mortality and decrease in family size. Here we come down with the education of smallpox, better education, you know, health service. It got down there, China comes in into the Western box here, you know, and here Brazil is in the Western box. India is approaching, the first African country is coming into the Western box. And we get a lot of new neighbors, welcome to a decent life. Come on, we want everyone down here. This is the vision we have, isn't it? And look now, the African, the first African countries here are coming in. There we are today. There is no such thing as a Western world and developing world, and of course, Lowering child mortality is a matter of actor most important from humanitarian aspects. It's a decent life for children we are talking about. But it is also a strategic investment in the future of all mankind because it's about the environment. We will not be able to manage the environment and avoid the terrible climate crisis if we don't stabilize the world population. Let's be clear about that. And the way to do that, that is to get child mortality down, get access to family planning, and behind that, a drive of female education. And that is fully possible. Let's do it. Thank you very much.